clouds parted over the Isles of Boreas. It was time to choose. The rebellion was in trouble. Ravens were scouting for the secret rebel base. They needed a game changer. Pieces of the Sky Ripper had surfaced. Or so a scholar in the mountains had told him. Surely the weapon that banished the lost gods could defeat the Emperor. Also, a temple had risen out of empty desert. The Emperor had brought the Sky Ripper pieces up out of ancient burial by his obscene rituals. Could this be where the Iblis Stone was hidden? Someone better get it before he does, thought Renardo. And also, his old friend Lapino needed rescuing. Of course, Renardo had a pretty strong suspicion that Lapino had betrayed the rebellion. But could Renato really leave an old friend to the Ravens? But the island was windswept desert. No one went there except ostriches and ostrich hunters. The Iblis Stone. It sounded ominous. It sounded powerful. If the Emperor was searching for it, it must be dangerous. And so, Bernardo went ostrich hunting. Every child could sing verses about the Sky Ripper, but ancient codices held hints of other things. A stone that ate souls, a ruby that drank blood, a jewel only a righteous man could give away. Were all these things the Iblis Stone? Long hidden in the buried temple. Another ancient item that was only resurfacing now. Drawn up from the deeps by the Emperor's horrific rituals. This chest had teaspoons stolen from every inn in Boreas. Oh, and something more useful. here tasted bitter. The steps were too tall for a person. The entire place felt restless, like it had been vexed to nightmare under the dust, waiting for its hour to come around at last. for a way in. Good. And he hadn't come too late. wanted to do that.
ready to take on new powers. any better dead than out of thought. Jewel. Bernardo couldn't wait to find a workbench. that way, he thought.
This stone was incredibly valuable. Bernardo could sense it. Also, it still had its price tag. could not get past this point. Obviously, the temple builders knew how to deal with tomb raiders. Renato had always wanted a flying carpet. This was more like a flying tabletop, but it would do. It reflected no light, like a void made solid. Nervous, he picked it up. I can hate you, mighty. Who said that? It was the stone, eager, thirsty. That seemed tempting and terribly wrong. Zenobia was the Emperor's greatest general and a potent witch. But they had been close once, and Renardo wasn't sure he really wanted to be Emperor. Why not capture the core of Sky Ripper instead? It was the eye of a lost god torn out by the transcendent Emperor to power his greatest weapon. What's the core? said the stone anxiously. to a talking rock. Ah, but the rock had a point. If the stone could truly turn him into a powerful warrior, he could defeat the Emperor with the very weapon the wicked old toad had sought for himself. To be a hero, you had to sacrifice old friends sometimes, especially when they've become enemies. As he placed the impossibly black crystal in his gauntlet, Renata had a sudden vision. Charred fields covered in dead ravens below a black sun. Was it the time of the lost gods before the transcendent emperor? Was it the future? Feasos, it whispered. Take the power. He could feel the stone's hunger for souls, its thirst for blood. All right, I get it. This was going to be interesting.
mysterious sword from the east made you so fast you could catch a fly with your chopsticks. Maybe that's what you really want. What else could you hook? How are you guys fixed for life insurance? <laughs> the ravens on Zenobia's island were no match for Renardo. They screamed as the stones sucked out their souls. And with each death, he felt stronger. The stone told him. Ooh, wouldn't his gauntlet look swell with that jewel in it? This couldn't be good for global warming. with the materials he had. Renato had a pretty good idea, actually. Well, they really needed to redecorate anyway. Zenobia was waiting for Renato. She was alone, confident as always. Fire danced at the tips of her claws. Are you here to surrender? She seemed as cocksure as he felt. But she didn't know he had the stone. And I've missed you too, love. He chuckled. She spotted the stone 
and bolted without another word. It was time for him to learn something new. He felt bad for people who had to study. Boy, someone has spent a lot of money for a graduation present. Finally, Renato caught up to her. He had never seen her scared before. At school, she'd been the determined, brave one. Now her eyes were wide, frightened. He didn't like seeing her this way. Kill her, whispered the stone. You cannot win your rebellion without it. Please. No, said Zenobia. Not that way. Oh, they had been so close once. Could he really feed her soul to his demonic gem? But if he spared her, he would not get the full power of the stone. Oh, how could he be the hero he wanted to be? With a flick of his wrist, he slashed Zenobia's throat. Her eyes widened even more. And then the light went out of them. Bernardo felt amazing. Power was rushing into him like water from a burst dam. Oh, such brilliance. Exalted the Iblis stone. Mm. Tasty. He felt a bit bad about killing her. He was pretty sure she still loved him. But needs must when the devil drives. Renato returned to the Farfarer and set a course for the Nexus. The Empire had a communication outpost there. He could call the Emperor directly. It was time to seize the outpost and let the Emperor know what he had done.
The Nexus was beautiful. He never realized how beautiful. Everything glowed. The wind was so sweet. The sun so soft. The stones so warm. The black raven feathers. Black feathers. Suddenly, his eyes are filled with them. He's falling through smoke under a dead sun. A voice calls him home. Is this a vision? Whose? Is this the time of the lost gods? Or the future? No matter. What mattered now was killing his way to the Imperial outpost and challenging the Emperor from there. This could be the new aerobics train. Am I right? Behind door number two. Bernardo. Up ahead was Lapino. What was he doing here? Bernardo! Hey, buddy! Hey there, old buddy! Please don't kill me! Why would I kill you? asked Bernardo. Although, he had been thinking about it. Well, uh, you've become... Uh, no, 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 I mean, no disrespect at all here. Uh, kind of... evil? Maybe uh, you should, I don't know, uh, go to the mountains to have a think? See if maybe you're sure the stone is not all that healthy a thing to keep? I suppose you want it, Renato said, and poked Lapino in the chest for emphasis. Oh, had he just killed the Pino? Oh, damn it. No skateboarding, the sign said. Renato rampaged through the Imperial outpost like a water buffalo rampaging. 
At the last moment, he remembered not to kill the Far Speaker Toad. After all, he wanted a word with the Emperor. But there was only silence. <laughs> the Emperor was scared, like little girl. Well, he would gather the rebel army and slaughter the Imperial fleet. Yes! Applauded the Iblistone. Tremendous. Then the Emperor would have to answer his fire speaker, wouldn't he? Who are you? Asked a distant voice that sounded uncomfortably like Zenobia. What have you become? The mountains. Go to the mountains, urged another that sounded a bit like Lupino. Renato called the Rebel Council to let them know to gather their forces. Then he killed the Far Speaker Toad. Why? Oh, because to make sure his sword was sharp. Oh no, that's awful. So no one else could use it. Yes, that's it. Then he set off for the ruins and the secret rebel base. Ah, the ruins were crawling with ravens. Probably looking for the secret base, Renato thought. But then he realized they're probably looking for me. They must be very scared of me. Well, here I am. You, you are the funnest warrior ever, whispered the Iblistone. And he had to agree with it, for once. Who was as good as Renardo? Zenobia, Hypatia, the kid's mother. Renato had never thought he'd date a librarian. He'd always figured himself for the barmaid type. But then, he'd never figured the library of Ubar would have comic books, or that Hypatia would know anything about them. He missed her. <laughs> Once, he found a Superman issue number one in mint condition in a jar he broke. He planned to keep breaking things until he had the whole series. Renato was so happy. Stone was the best friend he'd ever had. Really, who would bury such a treasure in the desert? Soon, he'd go rally the rebellion and usher a new age for the islands of Erda.
Renato wondered idly if people who had built these poles had really, really long tentacles. back to him. He wondered what he'd remember next. Firewalls only let you through if they think you're hot enough. Arcane power and an engraving to Cindy. the stone. Let it make you an emperor. Come to think of it, Renato thought as he put down another raven, why shouldn't I be emperor? I, how did anybody get to be emperor anyway? By making war. I'm not counting the transcendent emperor. Obviously, he had banished the last guard and started time. Yes, he should be emperor. He would make a great emperor. Right, Stone?
Keep playing. Long stairs. So he was close to the rebel base. Nothing was on fire. So far, so good. This was what it was like to die. Not nearly as much fun as they said. Time for a little exploration. Renato strode into the council. Let's do this thing. Let's make me emperor. They looked confused and nervous. Ah, had he mentioned the emperor thing? Yeah, he meant to bring that up later. Um, I mean, let's go win this rebellion. He waved his sword around encouragingly. They ran. Cowards. He'd stop them. He cut down a few to inspire the others. But soon, there was no one to cut down. Well then, he'd have to attack the fleet alone. More for me, he said. Unless it was the stone that said it. Traitors. Traitors, all of them. They'd run rather than following him, rather than cheering him. What should he do to the cowards? Anything he wanted to. After all, he was a true hero. The best warrior there ever was. No one could stop him now. But first, finish him. The Emperor, that is. Where was the rebel fleet? They weren't even trying an assault. They were going to miss a day in history. The downfall of this dynasty, and a new one to take its place. He didn't have to kill all the ravens. He could enslave them, and enslave the toads too. All the animals would worship him as a god, for he had once been a god. 
they would willingly give him their blood and their souls. And the world would change, would become familiar again. He hadn't noticed that path before. There were more pylons he could use the hook on. He really needed to construct additional pylons. Renardo was glowing with dark power. Already the sun had dimmed. He could do anything, he realized. He could wrap the island safely in smoke again. He was beyond a hero. He was going to become a god again. Odd, he thought, that the Iblis Stone had nothing to say about any of this. Well, no matter. Once he killed this petty toad emperor, he would bring back the Black Sun. When Renato went to the china shop, for some reason the owner was always nervous. Would he be rescued by an emergency platform? found the Emperor and the Council huddling by his ship, plotting. They saw him and cowered before him. <laughs> Back to hell, fiend, croaked the Emperor desperately. In the name of the Transcendent Emperor, croaked the Speaker. They held some arcane items he didn't recognize. He simply flexed his will and sucked their souls out of their bodies. And Iblis exulted. 
It is finished. And the void that had been a mere stone on a sword expanded, stretched and ripped like a vast womb, and a gaze black and pitiless as the sun passed through the void into the land. And so time ended. And just like that, he was alive again, and back on the Farfarer, still fleeing burning Ubar. The book was still open before him. So, the book was a portal. It took you to the future when your destinies would branch. He had failed and died three times, but he learned another true thing. The Iblis Stone was evil. It would try to corrupt anyone who used it. He could feel it. He just had to keep running the path of destinies. With that, the book fluttered back to the beginning, and he fell into it. Special thanks to my patrons Heaven Over Hell, Justin Wood, Hobbs, Koopy Vegeta, Gunrunner, and Water.